Welcome to our Grace Life YouTube channel. We would love for you to like or subscribe to this channel and really be a part of our online family and community. We hope that you enjoy today's message. Welcome America to the Voice of Christmas season two. We have some wonderful talent coming this season and others, we wonder why they even came. Take a look at some of our favorite, most memorable auditions. What up, everybody? I'm the next winner of The Voice. Hey, how you doing? It's Vinny Galatoni again. You guys might have remembered me from last year. Hey, Matt. I'm your biggest fan. Hello. I'm LaLasha. I'm just honored. I mean, we look alike. I have, I have so many tattoos. Thank you for asking us to be on The Voice. My name is Natalie. <clears throat> I'm at a payphone trying to go home. I don't remember the lyrics. Make my wish come true. It's your baby boy would kiss our sons and daughters. Did you know? Jingle all the way. Boys with the boys. Let us make some noise. Oh, it's your birthday, Jesus. It's your birthday, yeah. And if you don't got anything, oh, I'll give you everything. Oh. This love has taken its toll on me. She said goodbye too many times before. Oh, slow down. It's your birthday, Jesus. It's your birthday, yeah. All I want for Christmas is you. <laughs> America, I promise it's going to be a really great season. If it's your first time here, man, we say welcome home. This is the best place to be in the right place at the right time. And my name's Pastor Matt. I'm the worship pastor here at Grace Life Church. And man, listen, I'm so honored to share this platform with two of the best pastors who have, I have ever come across in my life. Seriously, I mean, talk about pastors who really will, will step out of faith, will really do anything, will risk it all to make sure that the lost is found. And so the reason why they're not here today is Laura said earlier, they're down in Puerto Rico, and they're doing what they love to do best, and that's taking the message of God, that's taking the gospel, doing what God is doing at Grace Life, and going around the world so that the lost can be found. I mean, listen, I'm thankful. Let's be believing that miracles, signs, and wonders are happening down in Puerto Rico. We support, uh, we support you, Jose, down in Puerto Rico. We that God is doing amazing things, but can we agree together? He says, where two more come and agree in his name, it shall be done. So, man, let's believe together that miracles seriously are happening. Let's believe that, man, while Pastor Buck and Pastor Amy are down there, that the, his angels take charge of the ways that they're safe, but let's pray that the words that are spoken truly impacts people's lives down there for eternity. Do we agree upon something like that? Yes. Come on now, are you thankful? Yes. How, many, how, many, how many enjoyed last weekend's sermon? Like 15 of you. Listen, that's on live stream. Pastor Buck's watching every single one of you guys. I'm telling him that there was like 300 people here that didn't enjoy his message. I'm just kidding. But listen, if you didn't get a chance to listen to that message, I encourage you, go onto our YouTube channel, or even if you did hear it, go back and re-watch it. Because I'll tell you something, there's, uh, you, we can't get enough of having an attitude of gratitude. We need to be reminded to be thankful in everything. It says in his word, what? Be thankful in everything, for this is what? The will of God concerning you and I. Listen, if we want to be able to outweigh the bad with the good, we've got to learn to give thanks in everything that we do. He's Pastor, I love what Pastor Buck said. He said that Thanksgiving is not just a holiday that comes once a year. It's an attitude and a lifestyle that we need to live in and out when we wake up, before we go to bed, when you disagree with your wife, when your kids poop their pants, whatever it may be. Yes, that just came to remembrance this morning for something that may or may not have happened. I'm just kidding. But hey, so are you thankful for your pastors? 
Are you thankful here at Grace Life Church? Are you thankful for a church that lives and breathes by the word of God, that will do whatever it takes to make sure that the lost is found? Amen. Well, I'm glad. Let's get into this. All right, let's do it. Listen, you hear me? I, I like to get really, really loud, and so I give you guys full permission to get excited about the Word of God. I heard it a lot over here, but the Word of God's exciting. Okay, okay. <laughs> Got some competitive spirits in here this morning. Matt, this says in Matthew 2, verses 9 through 10. It says, instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. Listen to this. They could hardly contain themselves. I want to stop here real quick. The reason why they could hardly contain themselves is because, man, they witnessed Jesus. And so a lot of times people always come up to me, and I said it earlier, to buckle your seatbelts. Like, man, how in the world are you always yelling? Why are you always excited? Why are you always pacing back and forth so much? Even first thing in the morning, I'll tell you why. It's because it's the Jesus that's inside of me. Listen, when you have Jesus inside of you, you overflow with joy. You overflow with peace. You overflow with power. You overflow with goodness. That's what Jesus does in our lives. Listen, if you're trying to do this life alone, how's that going for you? You can't do life without Jesus. If you do life without Jesus, you're going to be trying to do things on your own ability and your own understanding, and it's going to get you nowhere. It's going to lead you down a path of destruction. It's going to lead you to a place of only loneliness, and you're always going to constantly be doubting and searching for more and for more and for more. But when you got the Jesus inside of you, you found everything that you need. Amen? I like to think of it this way. Think of like a balloon. When you fill a balloon up with water and you keep filling it up, what's going to happen? It's eventually going to burst, right? So when you keep getting filled up with his word, I encourage you, get filled up with God's word. Get filled up with what God says. Take full advantage of being here at church. We're not here just to have some experience, some type of free show. No, we're here to experience and encounter God. So take some notes. Jot it down in your phone. Don't be distracted by Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat or whatever else or a text message. Put your focus on God. Take in everything that he wants to speak with you. It says in the back, to write the vision in big bold letters so one can take it and run with it. God wants you to run with his word. He doesn't want his word to just sit inside of you and do nothing. Man, his word has power. His word brings healing. His word brings restoration. Let's take advantage of God's word when we're here on the weekends. Amen? Amen. And so I love thinking about that. Okay, so let me get back. Sorry, i got to contain myself here. <laughs> at the end of this verse, it says they were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. I love that because when I think about the Magi's, and many of us know them through a childhood story, that the Magi's were like the three, they were the three wise, wise men. Right? And so the Magi, they traveled thousands and thousands of yard, or, or miles, not yards. You're like, yards, wow, that's far. <laughs> thousands and thousands of miles guided by this star that God provided for them in the sky. And I'm just sitting there thinking that they were probably so thankful to God for the star that he had provided. Because without that star, they probably would have missed out on the greatest opportunity of their life, which it led them to Jesus as their Savior. And so I love that feeling of being in the right place at the right time. Isn't it a good feeling knowing when you're in the right place at the right time? Right? Some of you single guys come in and you sit here and you're like, oh, that girl's cute over there. I'm in the right place at the right time, if you know what I'm saying. Dude, you guys are weird. Man, we're going to pray. No, I'm just kidding. It's good to be in the right place at the right time. I want to tell you something. If you're here this morning, and I don't know what type of situations that you're facing. I don't know what type of struggles that you're going through. I don't know what type of answers that you're searching for. But all I can tell you is you're not here by accident. You're not here by mistake. Because you're in God's presence, because God is here, that means all things are possible in his presence. So you are in the right place at the right time time. Look at somebody and say, I'm in the right place. Now look at your other neighbor and say, at the right time. Hey, hey, I'm in the right place at the right time. I don't know what I was doing. Hey, I love this earlier. I had to say this. I don't know why. I was, I was jamming out to some Kanye West on my way here. Like, well, are, are, isn't it so cool, man, how, how, how God can transform somebody in such a way that he can be one of the greatest lights for a Lord. Anyways, he said it in his one song. He said, man, uh, they say the strong start on Monday, but the strong start on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Kanye West, tag me right here. Shout out. Go download his album. Let me get some credits for that. 
Hey, Rissa and I were, were given this opportunity to go to uh, Hillsong. It's about four and a half years ago. We were given these free tickets to go to New York City at this Hillsong conference. And man, it was so exciting to me because at that time I was following this celebrity that lived out in New York City. I was like, God, could this be that you're providing me with free tickets so that I can go to a Hillsong conference and possibly meet this celebrity that I have a desire to meet out of all the thousands and thousands of people in New York City? Probably not. You know? But all things are possible with God. And so we get up there, and after one of the sessions is over, what do I do? I creepishly look up this guy's address, like a stalker. Forgive me, Lord. And so after the session's over, my wife and I, I was like, I was like, listen, we're gonna go into the city. I got this guy's address, and we're gonna find him. We're gonna find him. <laughs> and so, how many have been to New York City before? You know, if you, if, when you're in New York City, and if it's your first time, without a guide, it's really hard to navigate around that city, right? You can get lost very, very easily. So we have no idea what we're doing. We have no idea how the T works, how the train or the subway works. So we get onto the T, and let's just say because we had no idea where to get off, we're getting off at all the wrong stops constantly for like an hour. It's taking us uptown, downtown, Manhattan, the Bronx, some really sketchy places. I'm like, we need to just stay on here for a little bit. But it gets to the point where I get so frustrated that I'm like, Chris, listen, we're just going to get off at the next step, I, or the next stop. I can't take it anymore. And we're going to walk the rest of the way. And I know that doesn't sound that big of a deal, but I want you to keep in mind, my wife at this time was eight months pregnant with our first child. <laughs> and so isn't it kind of funny, this is just a little life lesson for you here, that a lot of times we get so caught up in our own desires that we even sacrifice the feelings of those who are closest to us, right? That's a whole other message. But anyway, so, so I was like, you know what, babe, the walk will be good for you. We need this baby to come early anyway, so let's just walk it out, you know? And so we're walking around, and, and because I'm trying to figure it out on my own, we're going all up and down the wrong alleys and the wrong streets and the wrong roads. And so finally it dawns on me, I'm like, why in the world am I not using my GPS in my phone, <laughs> right? Thank God for the GPS. It's, Siri is like the second Holy Spirit for us in life, you know? And so I punch in the address, and what should have taken us maybe like a five or ten minute walk took us like 35 minutes, because I kept trying to figure it out on my own. And so when we finally get to our destination, Rich is like, all out of breath, you know, like she should be because she's eight months pregnant. She's like, well, what in the world are we going to do now? I mean, you can't just go up to this guy's studio. The front door's locked. And I'm like, I don't know, babe. I didn't think through it this far. I was just trying to get here. And so we sit down on the bench, and we're trying to catch our breath for like 10 minutes. And then once 10 minutes goes by, I'm sitting there. I'm like, you know what, babe? This is kind of crazy. Maybe we should just go. Where are the chances that this guy's going to show up even though I showed up on his doorstep, you know? And no lie, the decision, as soon as I made that decision, out comes running this celebrity. I mean running out to his door. It was like a sign from God, like he came running for me. I jump up on my seat. I'm like, yo, what's up? Fancy meeting you here. What are you doing here? You know what I mean? I, I had to keep it cool. I can't let him know I'm like stalking the guy, right? And so this is what's so neat about that story. I met him for maybe like two minutes and then took a selfie. Here's my proof. I took a selfie with him. If you know this guy, his name's Casey Neistat. He's a famous film producer. He's Super cool. He's really weird looking. I know. And you're like, why are you following a really weird looking guy? I don't know. That's cool. Anyways, so I love when the Holy Spirit gives us revelation about some experiences in our lives. And two revelations he gave me, he said, listen, in life, when you try to figure it out in your own ability, you try to figure it out on your own, you're going to take some wrong turns. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to make some bad decisions. But when you take the time to follow the voice of the Holy Spirit, guess what begins to happen? He leads you to the right place at the right time so those desires that God has put in your heart will be fulfilled. That happens when you follow the voice of the Holy Spirit, the right place at the right time. And man, that's, that's such an exciting revelation to get. Well, how many know the Holy Spirit also comes to convict us? He's a convictor. And I'm not, I didn't say con bring condemnation. I said he convicts. Because there's a big difference between the two. Condemnation will leave you feeling guilty. While conviction will inspire you to be more like Christ. So man, he looked at me and he said, isn't it just like how we go through life sometimes? We'll drop everything to, to fulfill a desire of our flesh. We'll chase after it urgently. We'll call off of work. We'll change our plans. We'll sacrifice other people's feelings. We'll sometimes skip church to fulfill a desire that's so temporary. But then the very minute that the voice of God or the voice of the Holy Spirit says, hey, can you drop that real quick and come follow me? We're like, oh, I'll do that on my own convenience. Can we be the church 
that urgently seeks after the voice of the Holy Spirit to a point to where people in Pittsburgh are like, what's going on with all the people at Grace Life? How are they all healed? How are they all set free? How are they all prosperous? Man, why are their families and their relationships and their marriages healthy? Why do their kids serve in the house of the Lord and enjoy it? All because we're a church that urgently follows the voice of the Holy Spirit. How many want to follow his voice? How many want to be able to hear his voice way more clearly so you can fulfill the will of God? Amen? Let's pray real quick. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, God. Thank you that, God, your word is our guide in this lifetime. I pray in this moment, Holy Spirit, do such a working in us. Soften people's hearts. Let us be focused, God, on you and your presence. Let us take full advantage of what you want to speak to us here so we can take your word and we can run with it. Thank you, God, for using me as a vessel to communicate this message. Let every word that comes from my mouth be words from yours. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. See you guys later. Amen. I'm just kidding. Okay, so Holy Spirit will lead us to just the right place at just the right time when we follow him. But a question, and it's a very normal question to ask, but how do we know when it's the voice of God and when it's not? How do we know when God is speaking and when he's not? Well, it leads me to my first point, word for word. Write down word for word. What do I mean by that? When God gives you a word, it will always line up with his word. Why? Because what is his word? His word is his will for your life. His word will never return void. His word is full of promises that he will always keep. And so we can't get it confused thinking that this voice from God is this physical voice. When the words from his mouth are right here in the Bible. This is where the words from his mouth are. This is God breathed, written for such a purpose for you and I to follow, to be our guide. I love what it says in Matthew, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so what happens is when you start to know God's word, the voice of the Holy Spirit becomes a knowing that's inside of you. And the reason why is because the Holy Spirit is given to us as God's advocates to be able to bring to remembrance what God's word says. So that way when you face the situation, you know how to face it and how to react and how to respond and what to do, what not to do, because you hear God's voice, because you know what God says, right? Listen to what it says here in John, the New Living Translation says, but when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything. Everybody say everything. And he will remind you of everything that I have told you. So he wants to be able to bring to remembrance what God's word says. But how can he bring remembrance to the things that he says if you never deposit it into yourself in the first place? You've got to deposit God's word. You've got to read and dwell upon God's word. And I love, so we're going to dive here a little bit into the life of Mary. And Mary already had to have an understanding and knowing of who God was because she was given an impossible task. And we know what this impossible task is. She was birthing the son of God, right? And so this uh, angel comes upon her, angel Gabriel, and he says, greetings, I come with a word from, uh, from the Lord, you, Mary, you who are highly favored. You are going to conceive and have a virgin birth. And this child, you will name him Jesus because he's going to be the hope and the savior of the world. Listen how she first responds, though. This is in Luke chapter 1, verses 34 through 35. It says, Mary asked the angel, but how can this be? I'm a virgin. I'm just an ordinary girl. Matter of fact, I'm engaged to Joseph. Do you know what it's going to be like when I have to tell Joseph that I'm pregnant and it's not his? Shoot, I was freaking out even when Larissa told me we were pregnant with three children and it was mine. You know, could you imagine that type of story? <laughs> Dear Lord, that was like a nightmare. That just came and shocked me real quick. She's like, but I'm just an ordinary girl. I'm nobody special. Church, aren't you guys thankful that God chooses and uses ordinary people like you and I to work out his will, to fulfill his plans, so that what? The impossible can become possible through you and I, that Jesus is inside of us. And then the angel replied, this will happen through the Holy Spirit. He will come upon you in the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. I'm going to jump down to verse 37. Because again, Mary had this knowing, the angel had to re, uh, reaffirm her of what 
God's word says. It says, for the word of God will never fail. I love what it says in the, in the Passion Version, verses 37, 38. It says, not one promise from God is empty of power. Not one. For nothing is impossible with God. And then listen how Mary responded, because she already had a knowing of his word, and the angel confirmed his word. She said, this is amazing. I will be a mother of the Lord as his servant. I accept whatever he has for me. May everything that you have told me come to pass. And so I love thinking about this first portion that we read here in this scripture. At first, Mary kind of leaning, leaning, or was leaning on her own understanding. And because she was in her own understanding, she doubted right away. She said, there's no way. There's no way this is possible. How in the world am I going to be able to be pregnant and have a virgin birth, right? But then the angel confirmed his word with her and reminded her of that may all things are possible with God. And I want to encourage you, for some of you this morning, I want to encourage you, what word is God putting on your heart that may seem impossible? Maybe God's telling you that, hey, go and start that business. So what if people doubted you in the past? Hey, you know what? Go and apply for that job. So what if it doesn't seem like you have the right qualifications? Maybe God's telling you, hey, go put an offer on that home. So what if it's much lower than what the seller is asking? I want to tell you something. When God gives you a word and you receive that word and you know his voice that all things are possible, you're able to be, you're able to be voice activated with your faith. You're able to say, hey, listen. Listen, not one promise from God is empty of power. All things are possible to him that believe. His word will never, ever, ever fail me. Come on, church, say his word will never fail. Are you excited about his word? I'm excited. That's why I'm about to lose my voice. Man, we're in such an exciting season as Grace Life Church. And we're about, you saw earlier, we're about to purchase a new building. A building that a lot of people look at as impossible, have doubted us, have said, man, you can't take on such a thing like that. How in the world are you going to be able to manage such a large facility? I'm going to tell you something. When you're faithful with little, God can make you roll over much. I'm thankful, I'm thankful for two pastors that come week in and week out. They're faithful with the little that they're given so that God is trusting with much. Two pastors that sacrifice, put everything on the line to make sure that you and I can walk in the fullness and the, fulfill God's word. Man, we've got two pastors who honor God's word who live out and act upon God's word. God wants you to act upon his word. He doesn't want you to just sit there and dwell on it. This, uh, this is so cool. This one job that I had, I was this marketing manager for this company. And about five years into this business, I ended up quitting and leaving uh, to work for another business. And the reason why is because that other company offered me some more money. So I was like, shoot, heck yeah, I'm going to take that raise. So I left. And then I'm working there, and about seven months goes by, and I'm just starting to get good at this job. And so the owner of the old company calls me up, and he says, hey, listen, I want you back. What's it going to take? And how, how many know in my own thinking, I'm kind of like, well, shoot, just give me a little bit of a raise, and that should suffice, right? But then God interrupted my thinking, and he said, no, ask big. And I'm like, ask big? I mean, I, I mean how many know a big ask is asking for a larger raise, right? So sometimes we'll just settle there. But he's like, no, ask much bigger. Think bigger. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Okay, how could I even think bigger about this? Listen, you generally know when God is speaking to you, it's when you think up an idea that is far greater than the idea you could think up on your own. That's the voice of God. So I'm like, okay, God, I hear what you're saying, but, I mean, is this just a desire and a dream of my flesh, or is this really from you? i got to go to what the Word says. And I want to share these couple of scriptures with you because I believe it's going to help you in life. 1 John 5, 14 says, This is the confidence. This is the confidence that we have when approaching God that if we ask anything according to, and this is the key, ask it according to His will, then He hears us, right? I love what it says here in Mark. It says, I tell you, I can pray. If you pray for anything, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Everybody say, it's mine. It's mine mine because it's God's will and it's God's word. So listen, because I heard what God was saying and I confirmed it with God's word, it became this knowing. So it's like, okay, you know what? I can probably demand this big thing. So God, 
here we go. This guy's probably going to laugh at me, but I'm going to do it anyways because you're telling me to. So I'm like, okay, this is what it's going to take for me to come back here. I want a brand new computer. I want a, not just any computer. I want a 27-inch iMac with all the bells and whistles. It's about 5,500. No big deal. You can afford it. I want a brand new camera. I want all new marketing software. And I don't want just a little raise. I want a large raise. And listen, this will be the schedule that I will work because I believe God's called me to be in the ministry full-time one day. So I need off every Tuesday because I need to attend staff meeting. And I will only work one weekend out of the month for you because I need to get my butt to church and serve every time that those doors open. <gasps> And I hold my breath like that. And I'm like, this guy's going to laugh at me. I'm peeing my pants. And with no hesitation, he goes, round that dollar amount up to the highest dollar. And you got yourself a deal. I'm like, what? I'm like, go ahead, God. Isn't that the very nature of God? Listen, when he gives you a word, you believe on his word. You have a knowing of what his word says, that all things are possible. And then what happens? You act upon it. You walk it out. You don't just let it dwell. And then what happens? The impossible becomes possible. Why? Because what's impossible with man is possible with God. I need to calm down. Thank you, Lord. Hey, but think about it. What if I would have just dwelled upon the idea, upon this word that God gave me? I would have just settled for something small. When we don't have a small God, we got a big God. He wants us to ask big. And so when you know it's his word and it's his will, you're able to demand out those desires that he puts in you. And I want to tell you this morning, God's saying to some of you, Stop leaning on your own understanding. Stop doing your own and acting in your own thinking. Act upon his word and know his word. Leads me to my second point here, put into action. So I had to act upon it. Listen, so Mary was given this word and then she had to act upon this word that she was given. Look what it says here in the NIV, Luke chapter one, verse 38 and 39. It says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left. At this time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where Zechariah and Elizabeth lived. I love what it says in the message in verse 39. It says that Mary didn't waste a minute. How many times do we waste time dwelling on a word that God gives us, and we never do anything with it? How many times do we come to church and we hear these messages, we sit through these series every time we come, God fills us up with the word, but we never do anything with it. God wants you to act upon his word. God wants you to live out his word. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. His word is our very guide in life. Remember, when you know his word, the Holy Spirit's able to bring remembrance into you for when you face certain situations of what God's word says about you. And maybe the, maybe the word that God's putting in our heart is not something that looks very impossible. How many of you know sometimes the Holy Spirit can guide you to a simple act, a simple tell you something that maybe you're lagging in. Maybe he's telling some of you, hey, quit doing life on your own. You need to get your butt into a life group. Maybe he's telling some of you this morning that, hey, listen, can you be faithful with the little and tithe so that can make you roller over much more in the house of God? Maybe he's saying, saying to some of you guys, listen, you are and you have been equipped to do the works of the ministry. You've been given specific and unique talents for the house of God. Can you serve maybe once a month to help expand and multiply the kingdom of God? Maybe he's saying something gut-wrenching to you this morning. He's saying, hey, listen, can you open the Bible and read it at least once this week? Some of you are like, oh, Matt, why don't you punch me in the gut like that? Listen, I'm not here to single out anybody or any one individual. This is what God wants for all of us to do. Every single one of us. Yes, we may be at different levels. We may be at different seasons. But he wants each and every one of us to be living out and walking in his word. Right? If we want to see the kingdom of God multiply, if we want to see our cousins, our family members, our co-workers, our friends, everybody we come encounter with come to know Jesus, we all got to live out his word. We all got to walk out his word. We've got to take up our cross and we got to move. We gotta act upon it. God has given you and I talents to act upon. The band's up here already, whoa. I didn't even realize, I heard that sweet bass. So Mary was given a practical action step. 
Sometimes God's word is a practical action step for you to take. But are you going to take it? Are you going to move with it? Leads me into my next point here. So when you hear a word from God, and you have a knowing of God's word, and you act upon it, leads me to my third point, you get surrounded. And so I love this because we'll just read it in Luke chapter 1, verse 39 through 42. It says, Afterward, Mary arose and hurried off to the city of, or the country of Judea, to the village where we're going to call them Zach and Liz, because I like to shorten people's names. Zach and Liz live. Arriving at their home, Mary entered the house and greeted Liz. At the moment she heard Mary's voice, the baby within Liz's womb jumped and kicked, and suddenly Elizabeth was filled with the overflowing of the Holy Spirit. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. With a loud voice, Liz prophesied with power over Mary. And so I love because so Mary got this word. She received it. She knew about God's power. She acted upon it. And it caused her to lead her to be around somebody who was like-minded. And the reason why Elizabeth was like-minded is because she was already going through an impossible situation. This lady's old, and God gave her and Zach a word saying, hey, you're going to become pregnant. And so she was already six-some months pregnant when Mary received this word. So she already had gone through what Mary is about to step into. And so because she's a woman of age, she's able to give her wisdom. She's able to give her guidance. She's able to give her advice. She's able to tell her what to do and what not to do. Man, the Holy Spirit led Mary to be around somebody who's going to be able to encourage her in these next Next three months. And how many know those three months, your first trimester, are like the most important time for a baby to be born, right? And I think back on when Larissa and I were having our first child. Well, when she was having the first child, I take no credit for it. All men, can we say our wives deserve all the credit? They do. Okay, so anyway, so I remember thinking back on that moment because this is our first child. I mean, Larissa's behind all these books. She's watching all these videos, downloading all these apps, trying to get all this information that's out there because we have no idea what we're doing. But I'm thankful because we're sensitive to hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. He led us to the very relationships that we needed to be surrounded by. He led us to people who've already been there and who've already done that. People who are able to share with us the wisdom because they've gone through labor. They've gone through uh, pregnancy. They've gone through raising their children. So they're able to tell us what to do and what not to do. Where to go and what not, or where not to go. What to take and what not to take. And so I'm thankful that he led us around people who are able to help us to get to where God is calling us to go to. And just thinking back on it, but after your second and third child, let's be honest, it's not advice that you need anymore, man. You just need help, okay? We've got three children right now. We kind of need help. But I say that because I believe that God has or is trying to lead you to some relationships that you need. But how many times do we lightly esteem it or we just look past it so easily? We don't take full advantage of the relationships that God is trying to get us into. I don't know what that relationship looks like for you. Maybe it's your father. Maybe you need to get closer to your mother. Maybe it's an uncle or an aunt or, or a coworker or a boss or a pastor or somebody in your life group. But take full advantage of building that relationship because it's that very relationship that you might need to help set you up for success. And maybe you're sitting here like, well, Matt, I, I mean, I don't even know where to start with those relationships. Well, first off, I'm going to say a simple step you can make right now is get your butt into a life group. Get into a life group. And once you get into a life group, be consistent with that life group. And once you're consistent, seek out the relationships of the people in that life group, right? Or how about this? Look around you. You're surrounded by hundreds of people here on a weekly basis who love God, who know God's, who know God's word, who've gone through life, who've gone through the struggle, who've gone through the hurts, who've gone through the pain so that they can share their wisdom with you so it saves you years of heartache, you years of suffering, you years of pain. But here's the question I'm going to ask you. But are you seeking out the relationship or are you just expecting it to fall into your lap? Right? We're not waiting on God. God's waiting on us. God's wanting you to act upon his word. He's wanting you to seek out the relationships. And this is the one thing that I love about the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit, he will show you the very relationships that you need, but he'll also show you the very relationships that you need to leave. Pastor said this to me years ago, and it always stuck to me, and I'll never forget it. He said, show me your closest friends, and I'll show you your future. I'm not saying that those people are bad people, but you're trying to get here, and they're not going where you're going. You're staying yoked up with people who are wanting to just settle, wanting to go this direction. 
And you're like, well, where do I start? Man, can we be consistent with coming to the house of God and seeking out those relationships? Did you know that statistics says that the average churchgoer comes 1.2 times a month? It's kind of funny that we're like, God, I want all you got. I want all of you, God. I want these relationships. I want every word that you have for me. But yet we're only willing to give him one day a month. Church, I hope that resonates with some of you this morning. I really do, because if we wanna build God's house, if we wanna see his kingdom manifest here, man, we gotta be present. Being present is half the battle. But when you can get here, guess what? God will give you a word. He'll show you the very relationships that you need to be surrounded by and take full advantage of. And so listen, I love this next part. So she was given a word, she confirmed his word, she lived it out and led her to a relationship. But what if I told you that you could be the very answer to somebody that's been praying and seeking it out for years? An answer that somebody has been waiting for. Here's what I mean, because this gets so good. It says here in Luke, next, next point, just so you guys know the computer. <laughs> Luke chapter one, verses 40 through 41, that's how the Amplified. It says, and she entered the house of Zach and greeted Liz. When Liz heard Mary's greeting, her baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by him. So as much as Mary was guided to go and build this relationship with Liz and be around somebody that she thought she needed, Liz needed Mary just as much as Mary needed Liz. Because it says when she greeted her, she was filled with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. You're, you could be an answer to what somebody's been hoping for for years. As much as you may need them, maybe they really, really need you. I love this situation that, that occurred in my life, and it was earlier actually just this year. My wife and I, we were trying to sell one of her cars, and we were having a really, really hard time trying to find a buyer until finally one week, I had like three guys hit me up all at once. And one guy was like, hey, I can meet you uh, tomorrow night. Can you meet up? I'm like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then this other guy hits me up. He's like, listen, I can't, I can't meet up until later on in the week, but I'll give you exactly what you're wanting and what you're asking for. So I'm like, okay, well, I, have, I wanna honor my commitment to this other guy, so I'm gonna meet with him first, and then um, if he doesn't fall through, maybe I'll meet up with you. So anyways, I meet up with him over at the donut shop later on that evening. And what's so cool about Peace Love Little Donuts, shout out. Best, best donuts, Peace Love Little Donuts, Monroeville. Matter of fact, you can get one if you're a first time comer. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that was the voice of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and so I meet, this, meet up with this guy over the donut shop later on that evening. We're sitting there talking. He's like, man, I really, really love the car, but I can only give you X amount of uh, money for it. And I was like, oh, you know, you know, it's like a sales tactic. You're like, well, I got somebody else on the line that's willing to give me exactly what I'm looking for. So you know, and, and so he's like, well, okay, well, and then we start talking and chit-chat, and then he starts asking about the church next door, and I'm like, oh, yeah, Grace Life, man, that's only the best church on the planet, it's high, all the people there are highly anointed, highly gifted, all prosperous over there, oh, and by the way, I'm a pastor next door, you know, and he goes, what, and I'm like, what, I'm, I'm thinking he's about to attack me, or somebody's attacking me from behind, or something like that, and he screams for joy, because he's like, I'm a pastor at Bethel Park, so I'm like, no way. He's like, could this be? I'm like, could this be, God, that you're sending a pastor my way for us to build a relationship, right? And then what's so cool is so we start talking, and when we start seeing that we both love the Lord, and man, we're like-minded, we're trying to change the whole east side and all of the city of Pittsburgh together and reach the lost. So where he gets to a point, he's like, you know what? I trust you, and I feel comfortable with you. I'll give you exactly what you're asking for. And I'm like, ooh, shoot, Lord. And then... But that's not where the story ends. So then we start talking about more, and I start telling them about the church. I'm like, we've got this pastor's network that we do, right? And, and it encourages and equips pastors to where they can come and be vulnerable and share about the struggles and heartaches that they're going through to where we can help them to do everything that God has called them to do. I was like, you should definitely come and check it out sometime. He's like, okay. So he comes one week, and he loves it. And then he comes up to me. He's like, hey, I, I feel like i got to share something with you. Um, but I'll, I'll wait until I, I see it possibly come to pass. I'm like, okay, I'm like, well, whatever, dude. And then so uh, the next time we meet up is just a couple weeks later. We meet up for lunch, and, and we're in a pa it's in a circle of like 20 pastors. And we're going around taking turns. That each pastor is kind of sharing some things that they're going through. And it gets to this guy. And, and I love this guy. His name's Pastor Chanjo, and he's from Africa. So he's got this really cool voice. I'm not even going to try to do the accent because I'm bad at it. But he, he, he speaks real nice and slow and confident. He pulls out this list and starts reading it off word for word. 
He's like, listen, I need to share this with each and every one of you because this is a word from the Lord. He said, I was given this vision in this dream, November 2017, that I will meet a young man that highly esteems and highly honors his pastor and, has, and, and talks about this group of pastors that get together once a month that are vulnerable, that share with each other their pain and their hurts and are helping to reach all the people in Pittsburgh. He said, listen, I believe that young man is Matt, and I believe that, that that group of people is this circle that I'm sitting in today. Man, what's so powerful about that story is that as much as I thought that I needed Pastor Chanjo to pay me what I needed for the car, he needed me to confirm a word and a vision that God gave him two and a half years ago. I want to encourage you this morning. God will put a word on your heart, and you might not see it come to pass tomorrow. You might not see it come to pass next month. You might not see it come to pass, shoot for 10 to 20 years. But when it's his word, it's his will. And when it's his will, it will come to pass. Because his word never returns void. He's good to keeping his promises. God will always fulfill what he says. Are you going to believe his word? Are you going to act upon his word? Are you going to live out and walk upon his word? Are you going to deposit his word so, so you know it's a knowing? When you face something, as much as Mary needed Liz, Liz needed Mary. They both needed each other. That's the power of following the star. That's the power of listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He leads you to the right place at the right time. He builds up a knowing. He builds up a confidence. It's where you can act upon it, walk it out, demand the very desires that God places in you. And you can see it come to pass. Why? Because his word never fails. Not one promise from God is empty of power. I'm out of breath, so I'm going to end. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here this morning, and you're like, you know, Matt, I hear this message. Man, I want to know the voice of God so clear so that I know what next steps to take in my life. Maybe you're at a season to where you think you're kind of of age or, or you're, you're seasons, and, but maybe there's still gonna be something that you're believing for. I believe, man, when, when you receive Jesus into your life, he empowers you like nothing else can in this world. And so I wanna encourage you this morning, if you're living a life without Jesus, it's gonna be hard you're gonna keep making decisions on your own and you're constantly gonna be struggling and wondering. But when you have Jesus on the inside of you, you have the hope of the world in you. Greater is he that's in you than he who is in the world. So if you're here this morning and you're like, you know what, I need that relationship with the Savior so I can walk in everything that he has for me, simply raise your hand and receive him this morning. Across this room. Thank you, I see your hand back there. Thank you, I see your hand up here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, I see your hand. Trust me, this is the best decision you were ever gonna make in your life. You can't do life without Jesus because life with Jesus provides the Holy Spirit. Amen, well, if you raise your hand or if you didn't raise your hand, let's all pray this out together for those who are willing to take this next step. Say, Father, today I choose to follow you. I believe that you sent your son for me to forgive my sins. I believe he is the son of God. So right now, I commit to no longer look back, but to move forward with every plan and every purpose that you have for me. I want all of you in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, church, let's celebrate. Hands across this room receiving Jesus. Gosh, man, what a big deal. We hope that you enjoyed today's message. And remember to like or subscribe to our channels. And we will see you next week. Whoever finds God finds life.